And a special thank you for all those who took the time to uh, read the report online. This is an extremely complex and mercurial subject. Those of you who don't know me, I am Pete Cahill. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pete Cahill. And I'm better with a mic in my hand than on a stand, evidently. Um, it's been my privilege for the last 16 months to serve as the board liaison to the incorporation committee that you see sitting up in front of us. In that capacity, I had no official voice. I only spoke when spoken to. My job was to provide them assets and information and access and remove roadblocks wherever possible. And the question I've seen the most in the, in the questions that I've seen is why did we even have another incorporation committee? Well, here are the facts. There have been three previous incorporation reports and one attempt by the city of Crossville at a partial annexation of our Fairfield Glade. The 1994 corporation report stated the committee feels that the long-term requirements of the community would be best served by incorporation. In 2001, we had another incorporation committee report that looked favorably on incorporation, especially the long-term advantages. And the 2005-2006 committee said Fairfield Glade should incorporate after dissolution of the community cub and transfer of its assets and liabilities. Then on December 7, 2009, I and several other members of the community attended a Cumberland County Regional Planning Commission meeting the subject was to discuss the status of urban growth boundaries, which we'll hear more about here in a minute. The, the members of that committee or that commission are the cities and the county in Cumberland County. We are not members of that urban planning commission, but we attended as interested parties. At that meeting, after all the other things were said and done, the city of Crossville proposed to annex all the way down Pevon Road up to and including Food City. And they had signed petitions. Now, at that time, we were able to say something, and we did. We said, we'd like to remain Fairfield Glade in the 38558 zip code. In the conclusion of the meeting, the commission voted to deny Crossville's request at the time being and leave Fairfield Glade alone as defined within the 38558 zip code. And this committee will tell you more about urban growth boundaries in just a few minutes. Given the above, the board acted in early 19, uh, 2012 to stand up this current incorporation committee. We wanted to get the facts. If you go to the CNRs, or Covenants and Restrictions, Article 6, Section 5, which speaks to overlap with municipal incorporation, the board has specific responsibilities regarding protection of the facilities and assets as related to possible incorporation. This board is neutral on the subject but it is our duty to find out everything we can about it and plan in case for this potential outcome, a possible outcome. All right, that's the background. Here are the rules for today. The Incorporation Committee's final report was placed on the club website 27 August, and eBlast and print media articles asked for member comments and questions to be sent within 30 days. Well, to tell you the truth, they're still coming in. Today, the committee will respond to all the questions received. There will be no question and answer session after the committee is finished. Instead, we'll have some three by five cards for you to submit questions that still remain, and that will be the next phase of what we're going to be going, doing going forward. How was the committee selected? Well, we asked for volunteers back in 2012. And then what we ended up doing was there were three members of the board got together and reviewed all the applicants. For you statistic buffs out there, we tried to get a normal distribution, i.e. two against, two for, and three somewhere in the middle. All professed to be open-minded about it and would do their best to stay open-minded. With that said, I would like to introduce the incorporation committee. On my left, left to right, please, we have the Chair of the committee, Phil Ogden. Then we have the secretary, Kathy Tipton. Then we have Sue Brown, Gerald G. Parr, Pear, Bill Callis, 
And last but not least, Bob Templin. So Kathy, if you would, I'll let you take it over from here. Thank you, Pete. The first thing that we're going to do is start reading the questions that were submitted to us. Actually, that's not what we're going to do. The first thing that we're going to do is have Phil speak. Thank you. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me now? No. Now. We'll go with that for a while and let me know if it's not working. First of all, we're very pleased to see such a nice turnout. In fact, it almost looks like standing room only. Um, our hope is that you will leave here today better informed on some of the pros and cons of becoming a city. I want to make a couple of remarks about the committee. It has been a great group to work with. I appreciate each and every one of you. I didn't always, but I do now. <laughs> each member has worked hard and made a significant contribution to this process. We began in July of 2012 and have worked uh, pretty steadily since then. It has been a truly collaborative effort, including uh, some six hours as a committee uh, reviewing your questions and preparing for this meeting. We're going to presume uh, today that not all of you have read the committee report. If you wish to read it, there will be copies available uh, in the back of the room at the conclusion of the program. There are copies available at the uh, administrative offices of the community club. And you can get it on the community club's website under quote, what's new. I don't have any intention of going through the report. You can do that on your own. I will tell you that some of what we discussed today probably won't make sense until you read it. What you should know at a minimum is that we were asked to investigate the legality of Fairfield Glade becoming a city. We were to give consideration to the covenants and restrictions, alternatives, political barriers, <clears throat> and costs. With the constraints of certain uh, financial and, and time limitations, we have done that. In a nutshell, what we have concluded is that Fairfield Glade should remain essentially as it is, but that because of some financial benefits, we should become a municipality offering a bare minimum of municipal services. The recommendation has both pluses and minuses, and there are some hurdles to cross to do that. As Pete mentioned, the community was asked to present written questions to which we would prepare answers. Uh, that was to stop after 30 days of the report being made public. Uh, they were still coming in yesterday afternoon, so apparently there's no way to stop you folks once you get started. <laughs> we, and we will try to answer uh, the questions that were presented. We received questions and comments from fewer than 100 people out of some 7,100 residents, which uh, I think is a very small number. But 
a number of questions. Uh, the number of questions per person was often very high. We had several uh, with pages and pages of questions. Um, we received a number of comments that were not questions, just statements of how people felt. Some of the comments were quite negative. Some of the comments were quite positive. We acknowledge the receipt of those com comments, but we have no real practical way to respond to your declarations for or against. So we will not attempt to do so. We received some very good, well thought out questions. There were dupl duplicate themes in some of the questions and we tried to condense those so you may not recognize your precise question. We're going to start in a moment, but before we do, I want to make several things as clear as I can. We're not here to sell you anything. Our, our goal is only to inform. We are at a very early stage in this process, and the work of this committee we see as just a first step. Nothing is going to change tomorrow, and nothing is going to change the day after tomorrow. There will be no change in ownership, no change in management. The community club will continue to own and manage the facilities and the amenities. And in any case, absolutely nothing is ever going to happen on this subject without a vote of the registered voters in this community. So, Please take a deep breath, relax, and we'll try to get through this together. Now we'll do the questions. So the first question that uh, what we'll do, I will be uh, presenting. I will be presenting the question, and uh, Phil will then answer the question for you. And the first question that we identified is how much. I know, it's cutting. Here, he's having a heart attack right now, but he's coming forward. Uh, how, to the, how much? Give me that. He's on his way. I don't think it's me. <laughs> Technology is a wonderful thing, except when it doesn't work. I think it might be the connection. All righty, let's try that again. How much does Crossville receive for road maintenance, and how much does the, that city have to subsidize for road maintenance? And Phil's going to answer that question. Now I'm not, there we go. Crossville, like other cities, uh, receive state shared taxes based on population. Their budgeted costs for 2012 were $2 million. In addition, they got a grant of $225,000 for capital items. We don't know their receipts, but based on their population, we can do a simple, simple calculation and we think that they spent more than they were able to take in. The second question that we have is, uh, are there no more current figures for the committee than the 2006 report, or for you, than the 2006 report? There may be more recent figures. But given the nature of our recommendation that a new city provide trash pickup only, 
and only starting in year number two, we don't think those numbers are particularly critical to this evaluation. The next question asks about the people inside the three mile limit. Uh, would those people be in limbo if there was an incorporation? Um, this gets us to the map. We're going to do more with this map later on. But uh, the red is Fairfield Glade, dark, dark red. And I know you can't all see this well, and, and I may say this again, but you're more than welcome at the end of the presentation to come up and look at the map and study it. Um, this red checked area <clears throat> is what's called a uh, proposed, what's the word? PGA expansion. P well, what do they stand for? Land growth area. Land growth area expansion. The dark red is the PGA, plan growth area, and that's been approved by the county and the several cities. And this, this area right here is in that expansion area. And just as a reference point, uh, this is Peavine Road coming down here like that toward Crossville. The dark blue is the city of Crossville. So the answer to the question uh, about whether people would be left in limbo, it is our proposal that everybody in those two areas are in, or if they're not in, our recommendation is that we don't do it. Okay. They're, they would be included in a city, in the, in the uh, boundaries of a city, or our recommendation is not to do it. The next question is, can we explain the study that people want or need more services, such as police, fire, and roads? Uh, the conclusion in our report was not meant to suggest that our services are inadequate. But our reading of the Liberty Club survey from 2012 is that residents rank public safety, fire protection, and road maintenance as most important and are generally willing to pay more to get improvements. The next question is, can we estimate what the property tax rate would be, the property tax rate, and what would the property tax increase be? The property tax be of 26, 26 cents. I'm going to have a partner. 26 cents. Per hundred dollars. Yeah, our technology is not working very well. How are we doing now? The minimum property tax is 26 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation. An assessed valuation is uh, twenty five percent of the appraised value of your property here's what the property tax would be I'm going to give you three or four examples and you can compute your own just based on what you know if you had a property that's worth a hundred thousand dollars appraised at a hundred thousand dollars the assessment would be twenty five thousand dollars the tax would be sixty five dollars $200,000 property, 50000 assessed value, the tax would be $130. Go to 
100,000 assessed value, the tax would be $260. A $500,000 house or property would be assessed at 125,000, the tax would be $325. And, and you can go to whatever level you want, uh, just take a number that you think your property will be assessed at, or you can look at your own tax bills, 25% of that, and multiply that uh, times 26 cents per hundred. We'll get to that. The next question is what here? What impact would there be uh, in P vine widening? What the question is if P vine goes to four lanes up here, what would be the impact of that? On incorporation. On incorporation. And we don't anticipate the widening itself to have any impact on incorporation. However, uh, going to four lanes may encourage more commercial development. And therefore, it would be beneficial to incorporate before more development because new commercial properties would generate local option sales tax, which could go to the new city. If the development occurs before incorporation, that local op option sales tax uh, goes to the county during a 15-year uh, hold harmless period. The next question is, would Wyndham vote for city officials? Uh, the answer is no. Only registered voters in the state of Indiana, <laughs> a state of, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I have a confession, we moved here from northern Indiana. Uh, only registered voters in the state of Tennessee may vote. And, it, and it's one vote per person, uh, as contrasted to our community club vote, which is one vote per property. Could a uh, trailer move in next to me? I don't think it needs to be quite that loud, but could a trailer move in next to me? The answer is no. The community club still runs the community. A trailer can't move in next to you today, and they can't move in. If there were a city, they can't move in. Because the, our, everything is governed by the community club and the covenants and restrictions and so on. OK. Uh, could we explain the distribution of the state shared tax table on page 12 of the report? Um, the, the, the questioner in this case was concerned that uh, the revenue came in at different intervals during a calendar year. But the, the graph on page 12 of your report uh, has yearly totals for each category. And so it gives an accurate picture of what would come in, but uh, uh, the, inter the interval of uh, when it comes in is, is irrelevant, we, we feel. Uh, okay. Uh, how would community interest in incorporation be determined? Uh, at some point, a petition would be circulated, and voters would vote for or against, and that would determine whether it goes forward. The, the petition uh, would have to be signed by a third of the residents. If 
more than a third voted in favor, then it would go to an election uh, at which 50% uh, plus one would be required to carry it. Uh, the next question is, can we outline the financial gain to a city during the 15-year hold harmless period? <clears throat> during that period, a minimum property tax would be collected that we estimate uh, at today's figures at $777,926. State shared taxes, uh, which again are based on figures projected for 2013, would be $754,730, which in round numbers is a million five. Our proposal is that the a new city do trash collection, which parenthetically we propose be contracted right back to the community club. And we estimate the cost of that to be $380,000. Of the state shared taxes, 181,000 of that goes, has to go to road maintenance. We anticipate very negligible overhead, and as a consequence, the city would net about $970,000 a year. Now, we're not suggesting that that just sit there and accumulate necessarily. I mean, they could, that could be spent on roads or, or other things, but, uh, Everything remaining equal, uh, the city would, would net close to a million dollars a year for 15 years. The next question is, would our dues be frozen? Uh, not necessarily. That is up to the club. It, it would be no different than it is today with the club. Um, if there was a, the, a perceived need for uh, more assessments, they would pass that along. The next question is, would residents pay the same, would residents pay based on the same property assessment that the county uses? Yes. Uh, would we get a properly trained police force? Uh, That was a question that was that, asked. That was the question. We don't necessarily share the presumption of the question that we don't have one now. Um, but our the, the real answer is that our recommendation is for trash pickup only. Again, everything would stay the same. What would city governance look like? I can tell you that Tennessee allows for three different models. One is a mayor-alderman system, another is a commission system, a third is a city council and manager. But that issue is probably ahead, ahead of where we are right now and is not included in our recommendation. Would being a city make our facilities public? Um, that's a question that we got more than once. Um, a homeowners association like we have here that has a tax exempt status must make recreational f facilities open to the use and enjoyment of the public. For that, the, the club can and does uh, charge a fee for use, with the exception of fishing off the banks of a, of a lake. So the, so the answer to the question is that the public has access now. The community club is going to continue to be in charge 
of the recreational facilities. And the consequence is we don't perceive that there, or, or foresee that there would be a change. Would assessments continue if there was a city? Would property taxes increase? Would the fire department still be voluntary? 